Word. What's up, guys? I'm Eric. And I'm Chris. And this is Rarity Games, and we are here to bring you some new and exciting Nintendo Switch news, a couple Google, Google Stadia things, and um, the amazing new Nintendo Switch Lite announcement. Uh, I, I'm so excited about this. Probably not going to get one right away because I have a Switch. But this is awesome. This what do you is, think? This is a super smart Nintendo move. Uh, kind of surprised they didn't drop this one at E3. We were talking about that a little bit ago. This would have blown the doors off at E3 if they had done yeah. that like six weeks ago. Like not even that long ago. But uh, let's let's get right into it. It is a smaller integrated Switch. So it doesn't have the detachable Joy-Cons. They're built into the profile. Yeah. It is smaller, lighter, and sleeker than the Switch. It only has a five and a half inch screen as opposed to the six point two of the regular Switch, so gotcha. not a huge difference. A little bit, no big deal. Um, but it is going to be coming in some multiple colors, which are going to be very nice. As we scroll down here, we can see they've got the yellow, the gray, and the turquoise. All of them look awesome. Uh, <laughs> that turquoise is awesome. I love that. Price wise, it's going to be one ninety nine, which is going to be a very nice sweet spot where they're going to be getting a lot of people that necessarily didn't want to spend that much money on a teenager or a younger kid. But with Pokemon coming out and the new Zelda yeah. and the old Zelda and Mario yeah, that, Odyssey, yeah. yeah, everybody's everybody's really finding excuses to go play the Switch. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I yeah, know that. I I've been playing it like crazy lately, and none of the new games even dropped yet. It's just, they've been putting out sales, and they, they, for some reason, it feels like the right time to be playing a Switch again. Absolutely. Like, and it, they did this year after year since their launch. They just, they're right around that sweet spot of, like, summertime into, into fall and stuff, it, like, it just pops off. You want the Switch in your hands. And as we've talked about before, from a generational standpoint, the Switch is coming into its second year working on its third, and really having a lot of big moments whereas yeah. playstation and xbox are kind of winding down their generations stadia which we'll talk about later in the video is trying to ramp up for the first time be their first cloud cloud platform so uh right now nintendo is in the middle of their groove they're in that sweet spot and yeah. this is this is a very smart move uh put the console with some hardware removed in more people's hands at a lower price point give them more opportunity to play more of these great games so i, I think this is a really smart nintendo move yeah i mean just just looking at the thing um it they they, they completely got rid of the joy cons you can still use them of course with your other old joy cons so but they are they now the joy cons are essentially built in to the Switch Lite. So just to and clarify, it's much smaller. You can still use the traditional wireless Joy Cons yeah, right. with yeah. the system. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But the the Joy Cons are built physically into yep. the system. And it's it's compatible with all your Nintendo Switch accessories and all that stuff. Um, but the only thing it, it's not compatible it's, with is the dock itself. It, yes. I was so say. it is not meant to be hooked up to a TV in terms of the traditional switch way yes. this is a handheld only switch it, which a lot of people weren't sure they were going to do or not because it's kind of stepping on the ds because it's the new ds they yeah. are they've been slowly but surely my like picking off their 3ds titles have just stopped rolling out they have the few that are in development that have finished up and stuff and it seemed they said they weren't going to finish up with the ds but now it seems like they kind of know it's inevitable the switch is too good that we got enough sales on it let's roll out if the new switch if, and have a new portable if device. you really look at nintendo's hardware catalog system wise they have the traditional switch at 299 mm -hmm. they have the switch Lite at 199 they have the 3ds at 150 ish ish <laughs> the 2ds around 129 to 80 dollars depending upon if you want the xl the yeah show. they literally are hitting almost every price point up to 300 dollars, so, and that's kind of perfect for your everyday game and not only that even if you want to get your small child a 2ds tablet phablet looking device yeah they're only 80 bucks and they come with one of the mario games yeah, they, mario they, kart they, mm. 
Switch finds a way every time to not drop their prices of their current system. Not, like they don't, or even their games. Not like, not to mention the fact that they are coming into their own with the middle of the generation with Animal Crossing coming out soon, yeah. with Pokemon Sword and Shield coming out soon. A lot of the, let's call them the second wave launches, are really going to draw in a lot of people that weren't the early adopters, that weren't out there for the Mario and the Zeldas, which you and I are, but there's a lot of people that are that, like, casual Nintendo fan that is super hyped for Tom Nook and the Animal Crossing moment. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah, I mean, do you want to pull over to the other uh, page with the pictures of the sw- of the light? Did you... Uh, uh, that one was the one I was going off of the comparison right yeah, there. Yeah, no, I was saying the other one. The So we can... The, at the top. Click on Switch light. It should pop up with a few different pictures. Just to get a little more zoomed in, I think they have the back. Yeah, there's a picture of the how small it is to get a comparison. That is literally mm. fitting in my man's fanny pack. Yep. And it's that tiny. And you see the back of it there. It does, no longer has a kickstand. During the announcement video, he pulled it out of his jacket pocket yes. in his suit. So it L- while literally not, fit in your pocket switch. Yeah, while not hugely form factor different, it's enough that it does make it noticeably more yeah. comfortable to transport. And the fact that it is all one hard frame shelled all the way around is going to make it a lot easier for durability yeah, as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, it probably feels a lot more sturdy in your hands. The only thing I'd be worried about still is that analog yeah. stick. That analog sticks on the joy cons are very touchy and not only that but since it's going to be the same analog stick they're going to be much harder to repair or replace exactly. because they are integrated into yeah, the console i was thinking now. the same thing that's probably so the biggest to, downfall you, i'd say you this. have to open the whole thing to replace a button or something like that yeah. whereas your old one with the joy con it was troublesome if it broke but you spent 70 or 80 bucks you can replace joy cons with other ones um, but with this, it's all one form factor, so it has its ups and its downs. Yeah. Now, this is going to be launching on September 20th. Uh, the special edition one they're showing here with uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield theme is going to be uh, November the 8th. Launching with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Correct. So they're definitely leaning into their, uh, their I, I audience. Mean, right there, it, it's very upfront about it. I like it. They say Joy-Con controllers right there, no HD rumble, no IR motion, no TV mode, no tabletop mode, and then boom, there you go, got your regular Switch, $100 more, and it gives you those options. Which, if you... Uh, That's pretty nice. If you own Switch games or you have some of the launch Switch games, it was always very weird that they would break down these different modes that it would do because it would have all of those versions on it. But now we see why that it yeah. has the handheld on and, it. And now with the with the rumors going around that there's another switch in development as well, but which I'm not seeing until sometime next year. Um, and it, it, we may get extra features or something it's, different um, I, with the switch, or even just more powerful in general. I would imagine <clears throat> it's probably going to be at least a good eighteen months because I could totally it, see them discontinuing the standard switch. And then just having the XL and the light. Possibly. Yeah, uh, let it roll out slowly like they do their other consoles. Because, I mean, God, dude, I because don't know. Because we got the 2DSs still on well, sale. We got a 3DS, a 3DS Lite, a 3DS XL. Like From a hardware perspective, the manufacturing of the Switch Lite has that 5.5-inch 720p screen, which is super easy. common screen. Yeah, it's it's super in a common. ton of phones all over the world. The larger 6.2 720p screen is getting harder and harder and more expensive to find because it's not in as many devices, it's not as mass produced. Yeah. So it would not surprise me if they go to a 6 inch or 6.5 inch 1080p screen. Because you look at some of your iPhones, some of your Android phones, they've had these super premium AMOLED screens in them for a very long time. And for it to be a traditional uh, LED in the the switch I, I think i think they can up the resolution when they do the next revision and yes. have that be a premium 100 percent. yeah I, I honestly dude i wouldn't be too surprised if that nintendo switch Lite was the original concept for the switch well like they were like hey check this out this is this is our idea but what if this connected to the to the tv as well and what if the, the controllers came off. It's funny and that then, you, it's funny that you bring that up. When I first saw the drawings going around the early sketches for the Switch Lite as they announced it, 
it reminded me exactly of a Wii U tablet, except skinnier, more slim down, better exactly. design. That's what it feels like. It felt feels like a Wii U tablet to me. Yeah. Um, but much more better design because the way that was spaced out, it almost felt too Fisher Price, too like <laughs> yeah, big and too plasticky. Fisher Price. Yeah, I get. I, good, good way to put the, it. There's good. There's that good plastic feeling, and then there's like the bad yeah, plastic there's the, feeling. There's the good. There's the good toys and the bad toys. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> That being said, I think this is a very smart move. Uh, oh, I don't personally plan on getting one, but I have a nephew who I'm quite sure is going to be dying to take his, you know, holiday birthday Literally, money and get it. The adult switch, the kid switch, yep. like that is it, it, it's perfect. Or the person who would rather play only on the go. They don't really care about docking the switch because how many people have you heard, whether it be the journalists or other just gamers in general? They hardly ever plug their Switch into their dock except the charge. For a lot of people, the Switch already is a handheld device, yeah. and it, it just so happens to plug into television. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a very interesting case study to see how the market will kind of shake out, because I'll, I'll be interested to see if they sell more Switch lights as Overall. a handheld-only system than standard Switches. I mean, I can see a lot of people with 3DSs and stuff just getting a Switch light and saying, oh... This is my new DS. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, essentially, totally. with the catalog of games it has backing it now that aren't on the DS. And not only that, with Mario Maker 2 just launching and them getting ready to launch this, it being a handheld and only working the draw in handheld mode totally makes sense now because they have to program it for this new Switch Lite that's only going to be in yeah. handheld. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, real that's... quick to review, though, with the lack of HD rumble... And the motion control IR camera. There are a few games that are not going to work with the Switch Lite. They are not compatible with. As of now, that list only stands at three, which I got to give Nintendo props for a major design revision like this. For it only to be three games that are affected or three categories that are affected. It's pretty good. Um, As of right now, it sits one, two Switch because of the interactive motion and the fact that the joy cons are built into the switch light does not work with the switch light um you can optionally hook up traditional joy cons to it but that kind of defeats the purpose of having the streamlined body and carrying around fewer stuff i got you um likewise to the labo vr tech not going to work with that as well because you can't disconnect the joy con to go remotely control the robot that's a bug that crawls across the table or whatever it it almost gives a lot of people good reason to eventually like like depending on the upgrades and the things they bring to the regular switch in the future that people that may buy a light soon that it it gives them a good reason to go damn that new switch xl that's coming out i've been wanting to kind of get a switch because i'm missing out on so many features and like well, and oh if, well, this will be my portable, and this will the, the XL will be my console essentially. And if we look, that's, if, that's awesome. If we look in the industry at the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, they came out between four and five years into that like generation's life cycle. So I could totally see Nintendo following they, yeah. the same kind of thing yeah. around year four, four and a half, five, yep. bringing out the Switch XL, bringing out a hardware bump, and maybe making some of. Your older games, 1080p handheld, like we talked about before, because playing that Zelda game in 1080p is truly an experience. I love me some Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Um, But the only game, in my opinion, that's ending up actually going to affect the Switch Lite is Mario Party 10. That is a very popular game. A lot of people love that game. It is a very cruel game that is very fun, makes you hate your friends. Mm -mm. Um, But that is the only one that's going to have some compatibility issues right now with the Switch Lite. And honestly, that game is big enough and still came out recently enough. I wouldn't be surprised if they issue some kind of patch or maybe have some kind of alternate method where they work out controls. Yeah, very true. Um, so we got... And we also wanted to talk about, speaking of the Switch, if we're here, we want to bring up uh, some some of the games coming up that you be playing on your brand new Switch Lite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, of course, this month, actually, nine days from now, um, we're going to have one of my most anticipated games of this year in general. Mm-hmm. Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. It's great. Just in time for Spider-Man. Yep. 
just, like it, I this is the, uh, I just can't wait. I'm like speechless. This game is is gonna be so fun, bringing yeah. back so many childhood memories. This is gonna be a classic beat 'em up, while graphically not going to be the crispest or most visually stunning yes. game. It is a arcade style beat 'em up for the modern ages. You get a bunch of your friends together. You get a bunch of Joy Cons. Gonna have a good old time local online multi absolutely fantastic uh this is what marvel games should be in my head something <laughs> that you have every character you can think of you in the kitchen it. sink and Got just let right. them get in there and play uh so yeah, we're super excited for that uh shout speaking, out to marvel speaking of uh heroes click click that heroes tab right there i want to see what that brings up see if it gives us a full on just roster of what we're looking at uh, looks like it's just going through tiles. Hold on, there you go, there you go, there's something. Just this, so you guys can take a look at it for a second. That isn't even all the characters, I know it's not, because we saw them playing, and the ro and the roster was m definitely bigger than that. Yeah, when they went over the E3 live stream, Yeah, have a lot uh, more if you characters. guys want to check that out, that was the uh, Nintendo Treehouse, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, there was three parts, I want to say. Um, to a live stream of this game being played, and they ran through a lot of boss battles and a lot of gameplay. And they talked about a lot, I repeat, yeah. a lot of DLC. Lot. This website may be a little chunky, though, but, uh, <laughs> um, no, this, I'm th very excited for that, man. Like, uh, that, that's gonna be a game sure. to play. We're getting that on, which is very cool or the day we're going to halo outpost we'll be getting that yeah and probably playing it on our way back <laughs> yeah it'll be so great. moving along a little bit we have pokemon sword and pokemon shield in traditional fashion nintendo is doing two versions of the pokemon game because you do in fact have to catch them all yeah and regarding the switch light as well there will be a switch light if you want to wait around a little while maybe even catch a bundle deal of some sorts Correct. Um, to get that, and you'll get a Switch Lite and Pokemon Sword or Shield, I imagine. Um, and then, you know, we got uh, Super Mario Maker 2. That just came out. Um, I've been hearing a lot of great things about that. People were a little worried that since you didn't have the Wii r remote itself, being able to access that and have it on the TV at the same time, that it might be a little weird. But from what I've been hearing that's not an issue whatsoever that is people are literally just loving it it has almost everything and the capabilities of going from literally the first mario game to the newest mario game make it look like odyssey yeah and it's like crispy great gameplay I, great heard, challenges i've heard amazing things as well the only feedback i've gotten from it that not even necessarily negative but maybe a little bit mixed is certain people kind of miss having that wii u stylus if you played the mario maker that launched on yeah, the wii part of it a lot of people miss that kind of intuitiveness uh they had to go through a couple different styluses maybe bought from amazon or something like that that have the softer tip to work with the switch screen because the switch screen is designed to work with a finger oh, as opposed wait. to a stylus yes. and then of course every most people that would use the stylus probably have a screen protector on there too which doesn't really help no it's with not the stylus. i mean it helps the screen but no nah, not so much with the stylus not the capacitive um, touch no not at all and we uh so it, it, that that uh wait one more thing i wanted to mention about that mario um, maker 2 yeah i'm drawing a blank on what it was oh the challenges in it i was saying um People are saying, like, if you ever, like, a just tear up Mario games, like, you are one of those people, those crazy people, one of which I never was, that can just ace Mario levels, this is the kind of game you want, because it teaches you some of the most ridiculous high-level Mario gameplay, because of the, like, the way each level is designed to show you a new mechanic that more, one of the Mario games have had, or new mechanics. Mm -hmm. And then they combine them all together in these wicked maps, and you have to find your way through in a very abstract way, an unconventional way. The the only other kind of criticism I heard of this game, and by the way, we are getting a little bit nitpicky. The game is absolutely a fantastic, gotta <laughs> buy it, gotta play it game, um, is that it just hampered ever so slightly because of Nintendo's online ecosystem. It's not intuitive trying yeah. to add people to your friends list or trying to share 
your games or your levels that you created with your friends. They're great for random popular things or random, you know, here, try this level kind yes. of stuff. But if you're actually trying to send Eric a level or send Chris a level, you have to have your specific friend code and stuff in there. And why you can't yeah, just organically tie it in, even though it wants your Twitter login and wants your Facebook login, why you can't easily just add those people into your friends list and share them a level it's like they purposely work hard to go out of their way to try and make somebody else make the internet work for them yeah and that i mean that's nintendo for you their their online thing i don't whoever heads up their online department must be sleeping with somebody that runs nintendo because they just don't want to get rid of them like they 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 just let it i'll tell you i'll tell you what it is it it it's a very Japanese function. It's a very, we needed to do A, B, and C, and that's it. And they built it for A, B, and C, and they don't want to worry about D, E, and F. They just need it to play NES games and be able to download updates and make the store work. Hmm. And, and they aren't really too keen on voice communication, hence offloading it to an app. It's, it's all these kind of band-aided solutions that are added on after the fact because they built it for A, B, and C, and it does A, B, and C, and that's it. Yeah, that's very true. So well, um, While we're on the uh, topic of... Um, did you want to bring up anything about this? Well, yeah, real quick, kind of before we get off the DS... Or the uh, Switch Lite. <laughs> I want to say the DS Told Lite. you. <laughs> um, the Switch DS. Lite. Uh, the <laughs> Pokemon Special Edition does have, as you can see, special color controls, special like light heather gray to it. Has some Let's nice designs on the right back. Very cool, Um, but it does not come with the game. FYI, you do still have to either buy the game digitally with the Nintendo coupons they've been talking about. You can spend a hundred bucks and get both versions, Um, or you can get it physical or however you want to do it. But it is not included with the game. It's a little FYI. Oh, really? Yep. That's Um, interesting. So they do still have bundles as you can see they got the mario i'm Aces sure they, with the they will add one. a bundle that comes with the po- one of the pokemon games but i maybe not because it has one pokemon game or the other they just don't want to make two and, bundles. and one of the things i expect to see this holiday now that we're seeing a lot more exclusives and we're a couple years into the lifespan of the switch is that i totally expect to see more bundled in software versions it launched with Mario Odyssey bundle with the special red Joy-Cons, and I was working in an electronic store at the time, and I can tell you those things just flew off the shelf. Of course they did. And they added an $80 premium to it because it included the game and the Joy-Cons were red. So it would yeah. not surprise me at all that they come out with some other version of that that they can work, you know, a bundle yeah. together and get more sales. Well. Uh- Speaking of all this Nintendo talk, we had one more thing we wanted to bring up. Chris had a really interesting concept he brought to my attention regarding Google Stadia and how, in a way, and with this to me this made a lot of sense. Um, Stadia probably is Nintendo are probably each other's worst com- or best competitors. However Correct. you want to phrase that. So um, they they this they. I, they're they're perfect to battle each other with the mobility aspect. So they're they're both kind of shooting for that bread and butter of play anywhere kind of thing. Yeah. Go go anywhere you want to go and take your game with you. Um, Nintendo is doing it in a traditional sense and a hardware sense with the Nintendo Switch and the now newly announced Switch Lite of a lower price point, games in your hands, physical cartridges, a very traditional gaming aspect that has proven beneficial to them time and time again. Google was going the other direction and trying to keep all the horsepower and gaming in the cloud and relying on not physical hardware as much, but the connectivity of having a controller wired directly to the internet, of being able to plug a Chromecast into just about any TV where you are, or using a laptop or a Chromebook to stream 1080p or 4K games and It's very interesting because while both of them aren't necessarily shaping up to be the most powerful thing for next generation, they are aiming for that kind of middle point of good enough. Yeah. If you look at the Nintendo Switch versions of, like, say, Doom 2016 when they ported that over in comparison to a standard PlayStation 4 and a standard Xbox One that launched in 2013, 
it's still coming up better on Xbox and PlayStation than the Switch. That being said, the Switch version is fun, very playable, not necessarily the most bleeding edge graphics and the most sharpest resolutions, but it's good enough. Yeah, very and that's true. where that's where Google and Nintendo are aiming for is the good enough category. Yeah, because if you've noticed, a lot of people that have kind of championed the Nintendo Switch for their portability and all that have it as a secondary gaming system. They'll have a PlayStation, they'll have an Xbox, and it'll be their and then system. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. on vacation, Very I'm true. taking the Switch with me. Yeah, and now it's like, do I need the Switch when I can play a AAA game? And that, you know, obviously not too many exclusives coming to the stadia, but a game that maybe you're already playing, something like Destiny, you're, you're like, oh, well, I want to bring, especially if they do cross saves mm -hmm. and cross play in a way, you can just be playing on your PS4 or your good computer on Stadia at home, and then when you go on vacation, do I need my Switch? Well, I want to get my dailies in Destiny, so I might as well just bring my laptop or bring my new my phone, which I want to mention something about the phone thing with Stadia, but uh, like that's perfect in a way to just go to go and, and just take your phone with you, something you're gonna have anyway, and and, it, and log into Destiny. Do you really need your Switch at that point? And it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis if it works for you and your area and where you like to go and your habits. But Google's more or less relying on the fact that you can just go somewhere and log in. And if you're playing maybe not a first-person game, maybe a little bit of a slower turn-based or something, you can play with the trackpad on a Chromebook. Yeah. You can adapt and let your play style kind of... Yeah, flourish. play how you yeah. want exactly <laughs> so the only real physical thing google's trying to sell you is a chromecast which they've been trying to sell you for years mm -hmm. and a controller that if has wi-fi in it yeah exactly and a controller that has wi-fi on it because for most cases practically it seems you're really going to need the stadia controller to really make it worthwhile to be considered a gaming system trying to play it with a keyboard and, and mouse for certain games works but it's not necessarily going to work for all the games Whereas, Ninten yeah. whereas Nintendo, everything's circling through those Joy-Cons. Everything's about those traditional ABXYs and your left and right stick. So it's interesting to see them kind of competing for the same market, but doing it in very different ways. The fact that Nintendo still uses a cartridge-based medium to reduce load times and lag. Yeah. Whereas Google's trying to do it through the cloud... Which in certain metro areas like we have in Philadelphia is doable. It's totally yeah. doable. Um, I've been actually focusing a lot on speed tests in different areas yeah. and stuff. And for the most part, like if you have Xfinity Wi-Fi even, and you have the access to their hotspots, you can kind of play on on Stadia in a low resolution mm. anywhere, anywhere that there's some kind of Xfinity signal. And if you think about it, from a term of third-party games are going to end up being everywhere but if you really think about it you're going to pick your most comfortable platform of where you're going to play it if you like just holding it in your hand and having a physical game cartridge you're probably going to go with nintendo because it's portable you can play it on your couch you can play it in bed you can swap a game to a friend yeah. by loaning them a physical cartridge which in the next generation is going to end up slowly becoming a rarity. It's going to phase out. Yes. It, it's not going to be a commonplace thing for It'll all of the consoles anymore. more of a collector's anymore. thing yeah. almost. And, and, and like, it really at this point in this conversation, I think it, it, for the most part it comes down to your taste in games. Because mm -hmm. Stadia is going to go for be Google being Google. They're going to go for the everyman game. They're going to go sure. for the games that sell the best. They're going to go for the games that people are on YouTube looking at the most. Because that's their whole concept with integrating everything they already have. So, do you love Nintendo games? Mm -hmm. You're still going to want to switch. And, it's and your indie games and stuff. Like, Stadia is not going to be busting out indie game after indie game and on, on, on all these platforms. They already have the app market for at, le at least not necessarily for launch. It's, it's shown that it's going to take a little bit of effort to build that platform out. And at this point, they seem more concerned with your ubisofts your bethesdas they're trying to get your triple a third party games to build their library because they're launching a service from scratch yeah. microsoft's in the process of carrying over four generations of games onto their next console 
Sony has various versions of backwards compatibility from gen to gen through like PS1, 2, and 3. Yeah. And now they're starting to rely on the cloud trying to carry it into PS4 and maybe even PS5. They have announced backwards compatibility from five or from four to five. So it, it's kind of a rough spot for Stadia that they're starting almost at a scratch point. Cause, very true. Because they're launching a game system with games that have already been everywhere else. And if you consider yourself yeah. a gamer, a lot of these games you probably already paid 50 yeah. or 60 bucks for somewhere else. Yeah. It, but it seems like they're relying on their backbone that they already have. Mm-hmm. They, they want to, like I said before, integrate the YouTube thing. And also, I'd imagine, integrate the App Store a little more. Like, they can make the App Store, the Play Store rather, um, kind of and Stadia kind of one and the same, you know what oh, I sure. mean? If they, as long as they rebrand a little bit and kind of make like bring it, bring some life back to yeah. the Play Store, you'll be able to get. And I, I know there's a mobile world out there. I'm not part of that m- mobile gamer world, but not as much at least. Um, but if they do it right, they they're gonna have a good setup ahead of them already. So Switch ha- did a similar thing when they launched. They needed to get all those people back like all those people that didn't care to put their game on the wii u or the wii they there they had to fight to get the the switch rolling and that thing has so many games on it now that are great so we'll see speaking obstacle wise like we just said stadia is coming from scratch they're launching new platform they're trying to get big games on there they're really trying to build out nintendo is having the other end of the problem where they have plenty of games they're able to get from partners and studios and bring everything over just like they're bringing The Witcher 3. Yes. But Nintendo's big problem is the hardware limitations of that Tegra processor yeah, and being mobile. And Stadia's not going to have that problem. Stadia's not going to have that problem like Nintendo's having it trying to run The Witcher in handheld on the DS or on the Switch Lite, I'm going to keep saying it, on the Switch Lite at 540p in handheld. Oof. <laughs> Oof. 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 540p in The Witcher is is very muddy. Yeah, it's not a sharp, sharp that resolution. That is something to think about for with a the huge light game. Because yeah. you got to remember, they have specifically said the Switch, while docked, is more powerful. Runs off that USB C connection, will output at 1080p. And specifically, talking about The Witcher 3, it will run it at 720p. Yeah. So if you have to think think We're about it, see. is going with the DS light or the Switch light? I did it again. Going with the <laughs> Switch light, it's having reduced power, but you're having something in your hand on demand. You can play it on a plane. You don't have to worry about is there internet there? Is there cloud there? You just pull out your traditional Game Boy, but of the modern version, and just play a game. And it doesn't yep, get any more simple gold. than that. Yeah. So I think it's Stadia Stadia has a lot of uh opportunity if they set this up right but they also have a lot of concerns because google's notorious for not sticking with something yeah that that's been a a very common subject brought up lately if if they stick with it and build out the platform like they did build the play store and they make this just another aspect of the play store like you were talking about i think this could be a huge juggernaut because how many people maybe not right now maybe not at the end of this generation But the beginning of next generation with the PS5 and the Xbox Scarlet and whatever, when there's a brand spanking new third-party game that only runs on those new platforms, isn't going to get full fidelity on a Switch or might not even come to the Switch because it's a 4K game or whatever, are you going to turn around and buy a console for that game? Or are you just going to spend 60 bucks and buy a controller? I'm sorry, $80 and buy a controller and then spend 60 bucks and buy a game and you're there. Yeah, it's a hard question to answer right now. I mean, it's like they they it, this could completely flop. For it, the most it's possible, part. yeah. Yeah, you look at what like Google keeps everything going through their giant system of phones and they and everything they have set up, you're integrated into that system whether you like it or not. Well, and and it's like that makes it easy for everybody. But are they going to put the time, the effort, and the money into maintaining Stadia and continuing to try to push people towards it? Or are they just going to put it out and go, hey, we have this now. 
we're gonna add games, and that's all you're gonna know. And and there is a high chance of probability that could happen. Google's notorious for launching projects, having fanfare for like two or three months that they launched it, and then it's just out there in the world. And if it gets people, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. Two years go by. If it makes some money, cool. What can we do to it? If it doesn't, can it next? Whoop. So, they have announced that specifically whatever games you buy through Stadia are going to be in your library and available to you for the length of the Stadia service, whatever that may be. So, if the game gets pulled, you'll still have access to it, according to Google. But, like we said, this is all very kind of in-the-cloud, wishy-washy, you-don't-directly-own-anything stuff. Yeah. Versus... Nintendo's going the other route. You buy a physical cartridge that you can they buy, really sell, want you to or buy trade. Physical. Uh, well, it goes well, both ways right now. They, they really they want do, you on the eShop too. They do still make a very large amount of money, not only off their own games on eShop, but selling other games off eShop. From from indie standpoints, they love the eShop for stuff like yeah. that. However, from a quality experience of like loading and the way everything's working they love to also try and sell you those physical sd card games yeah yeah so it's very very interesting to see uh what'll happen because it's literally the old business model versus the new business model of buy a system buy a game play the game versus you're in the cloud you're paying for something you can't touch but you can play it whenever you want wherever yeah. you go uh, regard regarding stadia as well um with the whole deal it's coming down to uh the phone thing are you gonna have the phone to just pull out and just play if you buy a 60 dollars game well do you have a pixel yeah. because if you don't have a pixel guess what stadia is not launching for you and let, unless you have a good uh, computer that's decent, I mean, I guess you could run it on your computer, but are you are you going to be carrying around a computer everywhere you go? So like, it, it comes down to that as well. It's like you, it, I, I'm not going to buy a Pixel. There's a few tablets that support it as well, but I'm not. I, I don't care and for not, a, a Google Pixel. And not right only now. that, some of the Pixel phones start at three ninety nine, which is as much as another game console. Yeah, a full game console. Like why? Yeah. So that so, comes into play here too, and I I really think. It's almost a level playing ground, and they're fighting different games on the same field. It, it, feel, it feels like there is this battle between Nintendo and Microsoft yes. and Sony, and they're having this three-way like World War II battle, and then Google Stadia just parachuted right into the middle of that yeah. fight, and yes. it's fighting everyone on all sides in, in all directions. For different reasons. Yes, yep. exactly. And that, that, that goes to show the planning at Google. They know what they're doing for the most part. They want to come at everybody in yeah. their own way. They want to add a little bit of everybody's flair to but, their system. But that business model is going to prove either a complete success or, or a complete yeah, failure. A complete There's thug. nothing in between. They're real, yeah, I, don't, I, I think you're dead on with that one. Because for them, with the amount of server stuff and back-end stuff that Google's talking about, this is not a cheap investment. Yeah. This this is them putting a big bet that this is going to end up paying off for them. Which, being the rise of streaming video, it's only natural that they're trying to take the next digital format of gaming streaming. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But much like Microsoft, when the Xbox One launched in 2013, tried to go all digital and you couldn't swap games, and you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that... This is the same presentation we're now getting from Google just, you know, six years later of when you buy a game, you can't play my game that I bought. No, it's my game. Exactly. (laughs) It's linked to my Google account. Are you part of my Google family circle? Yeah. yeah. No, I hope not. No. (laughs) Well, I mean, that for the most part, I think that, that about covers it. Do you have anything else to add to Stadia? The only other thing to say about Stadia... uh, that I think is going to be an impediment to it is really, like Eric had mentioned, it's phone-wise, it's going to launch on Google Pixel's phones for streaming with yeah. a Stadia app. And then probably spread to other flagship phones in the future. Eventually, yes. Uh, it's going to be on Chromebooks, PCs that have the updated Chrome browser, and uh, a certain class of tablets they have not specifically gotten into yet that no, runs Chrome browser. So. Um, but I think 
it's going to be an impediment for them. Oh, and the Chromecast Ultra that they have included of in the course. Founders yeah, Edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of the console. For so. for the TV aspect of the traditional yeah, version yeah. of the console, that's the console. Um, I think that's going to be an impediment to them to really get out the door because you almost are overcomplicating your launch by saying it'll work on these three devices, but not that device, but these four, but I can sell you this exactly. for 70 bucks. People are going to look at it and go, oh my God, there's too much. I don't care. The, unless that, uh, uh, unless after rough. they launch in like the holiday season, which is very possible, they go to like a Best Buy or something like that, a Walmart, and say, here's the kit. Here's this box you buy that contains the Chromecast Ultra and that literally like the Founders kit, but like something physical for mom and pops in the store to go pick up because if they if they don't see a price tag in a box in a store for a lot of traditional people yeah they're not necessarily going to get on board with this i think you're automatically going to get a lot of early adopters a lot of people that want to experiment with it because literally just for 130 dollars to try it out doesn't sound like a bad idea for no. what they're necessarily selling because a Chromecast Ultra is just a Chromecast Ultra. Hey, it's a four K hey, video. But stream. you can put up an extra seventy bucks and just get a Switch Lite. <laughs> and there the battle begins. Yeah. There the battle. And begins. here the video ends. <laughs> All right, guys, that about covers it for today. Thank you so much for uh, coming over and hanging out with us at Rarity Games. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Yep. And uh, as always, I'm Chris. And I'm Eric. And keep on gaming. Later on, guys. Have a good one. Later.